Okay, pals, welcome back to another Star Wars Black Series action figure review in the 112th scale. Uh, today we're uh, jumping into the Laser Pants collection, and we're going to have a look at a C-3PO action figure, and I'm pretty sure it's from Rise of Skywalker, the, the latest and last film in the Star Wars saga. And like everyone else my age, I had a, a Kenner uh, Star Wars C-3PO from, you know, around 1978, 79, uh, so, uh, you know, holding this in my hands brings back a lot of joyous memories. Um, now, uh, overall, the look of the figure is spot on, in my opinion. This looks just like C-3PO, as he appeared in the original films, except I think maybe that version of C-3PO had a silver leg over here, and I bet there are uh, versions of this figure in this series that possess the silver leg. However, the Kenner C-3PO... I'm almost positive did not have a silver leg. It was just all gold, uh, vacuumized metal gold. Now, this is not vacuumized because I think I don't think that's a thing anymore. It's either uh, detrimental to the environment or it's cost prohibitive, so you don't see vacuumized metal anymore. This is just painted gold, but it is shiny, and it looks fine. I think it looks really good. Another difference from the uh, original Kenner Star Wars C-3PO is that uh, this figure has the painted wiring here on his abdomen. Now that's present on the actual character in the films, but not the original toy. Uh, however, uh, in the mid-1990s, uh, the Power of the Force Kenner line, uh, that C-3PO did, I distinctly remember, did have this wiring here in the abdomen. I think it's a fantastic looking figure. Now as far as posability and articulation, well, you saw that it was standing uh, perfectly fine on the game board there, so that's not an issue with this figure. Nice tight joints in the ankles. Um, this is a droid. This is a robot. It is not supposed to possess uh, human range of motion, and it doesn't. I mean, you can bend about that far back on the legs, and, you know, you've got very limited motion here at the uh, shoulders, and you've got these rods connecting the bicep to the forearm. It is articulate, but, you know, that's about as far as you can go with it. Very, very stiff joints on the thing, as, as was the case with the actual character. Now, you've got some good movement here in the head, and look at that, look how far he can bend back, and that, that's on brand, I mean, I, you see him standing like this in a lot of promo shots, a lot of promo artwork and photographs and stuff, so again, nice job there, you can't really turn him too much to the sides, not a lot of twist there because of this circular disc that comes down, that's prohibiting that, but it's a great display piece, folks, it is posable, you can do all kinds of things with him, um, now, uh, he does have a couple of additional features, one of which I can't show you. Uh, apparently his eyes turn red if you put him in the freezer. I don't know why, folks. It must have something to do with uh, the new film, which I have not and will not uh, see. Um, now, there's another neat feature I might not be able to show you quickly here. I don't, I don't have fingernails, you see, but the back of his head comes off, exposing his, what do they call it, his positronic neural network. No, that's, that's uh, Star Trek. Um, uh, let's uh, do a jump cut here. It might take me a few minutes to get this off, okay? Okay, about 10 seconds later, and I was m able to get the uh, the head off. I think that's pretty cool, folks. Again, there must be something that happens in Rise of Skywalker that warrants this action feature, but hey, uh, that's pretty cool, and it, it, it goes back on quite easily, and it stays on quite well, too. So, so overall, what do I think of this figure? It's great. It's absolutely great. It's going to look so well with all of my other uh, um, uh, main cast of, of Star Wars. Uh, still lacking a couple of key figures. Uh, an R2-D2, got to find one of those. I'm not interested in the Dagobah R2-D2 because he's covered in filth. I'd rather have a clean version, so I'm just going to have to be on the lookout for one of those. Now, for whatever reason, this figure comes packaged with Chewbacca's accessories. We have his, his bandolier and pouch, and... His bowcaster, so, and that, that's two pieces you put together right there, but that, that very much looks like a Wookiee bowcaster. Like all uh, Black Series weapons, it's made out of rubber or a very rubbery plastic, so you have those bent scopes on it. That's, I'm getting so used to that, and I, it's, it's really superb. It's academic, folks. Uh, these Star Wars weapons are, are all subpar quality compared to the action figures, and that's all there is to it. But now, if I can find a Chewbacca, uh, loose and incomplete, naked, essentially, uh, for like 4 or $5 on eBay, I already have accessories to put on them and complete them. So, 
I'll just be on the lookout for one of those. But otherwise, this 3PO doesn't need weapons. I mean, good lord, he, I think he might have uh, at some point switched heads with a battle droid in the prequels, and maybe then he fired weapons or something. Let's not think about that, okay? Let's just let's just think about the original trilogy here. Detail is superb on this figure, folks. Um, and uh, again, this is not the only C-3PO action figure in the series. I'm sure there's one that comes apart. Probably comes with a Chewbacca gift set. Uh, you can, you know, put all his parts in that netting on Chewbacca's back, like in The Empire Strikes Back. I, I bet that's a thing. And I'm sure there's a, a, a C-3PO that has a silver leg as well. And I'm pretty sure there's a C-3PO with a red arm. I have absolutely no idea what's going there. Don't care. I'm perfectly happy with this one. This I don't know if this is the definitive C-3PO, but it's the only one I need. And I think it looks great. Well, there you go, folks. There is a, a very nice C-3PO action figure. And I uh, thank you so much for watching. May the Force be with you. Talk to you again real soon.